What's up YouTube? It's Mike here back with another video. Uh, today's video I'll start off with some bad news. So I lost the Aeropyma earlier this week. So I'll try to give you an idea of what happened. I decided to move the Aeropyma to the 300 gallon with the Arowana and, and the Ray Pups for a grow out. He was doing well in the 180 and he had grown a lot. So I figured, you know what, I'll put him in the 300 and he can stay there until he's ready for the 1100. Well, what happened was I put him in and he was doing fine for the first hour or so. And then I had a friend come and visit. And I'm not blaming the friend here. Even though it's his fault. It, it's definitely his fault. So he wanted to come down and check out the fish and I had all the lights off. So when I first put the Aeropyma into the 300, I had the lights off. So I turned all the lights in the fish room on. We started walking down the stairs and he started freaking out, spooking. And then after his little spook out, it was very clear that he had injured him, himself. Swim bladder issue. Decided to leave him in the 300 overnight, see how he does. I didn't want to try to catch him again and stress him out more. I hoped if he would recover, he could should be able to recover there. So uh, come the next day, he had clearly gotten way worse by the afternoon, about 24 hours later, he had gotten way, way worse. He ended up not making it. It's really upsetting to me. If you follow me on Instagram, I announced this the other day after it happened. I had a bunch of people chime in and say that they've had a lot of problems trying to raise baby Pimas. I didn't realize that they are this sensitive at that age, but it does make sense. Um, I did know that they have a jumping problem, but uh, I didn't expect that to be as big of an issue as it was. That's the unfortunate sad news. I figured I would get that out of the way. Just in case you're wondering, I do not plan on getting another Aeropyma, at least not anytime soon. Maybe if the opportunity comes up that's as good as the last opportunity, I would uh, try again, but for now, I think I will stay in my lane and uh, avoid fish like that. I have enough monsters, so um, yeah. Let's move on to what the point in the video is. I wanna talk about uh, my freshwater rays, which I'll just go through some of my experiences um, that I've had keeping freshwater rays, good and the bad that I've encountered. So yeah, let's get into it, and I'll go over uh, what I do have for species, because people ask a lot, you know, what, what kind of rays you have, things like that, so. So let's start with the two largest rays that I have. They are wild caught from Peru. They are Castexi. The darker one is Otorongo, and uh, the lighter one they call the Peru flower. So these guys have grown an awful lot for me. Got them around nine, 10 inch disc from predatory fins. The biggest one uh, is clearly the Otorongo, and I would say he's a good 15, 16 inch disc. He's just huge and you can really tell when he glass surfs how big he really is. Now these are two males, which oftentimes does not work well. And I did find that when they were in a smaller tank, they did not work. They were too much in each other's faces. And as you can see, this one does get his disc chewed on um, by this one. It's usually due to feeding and they just fight over food. But I have not had any severe problems in this tank with the two. They'll get a little nippy with each other here and there, but as you can see, their discs are still in really good shape. There's no big chunks taken out or anything like that. So I um, am happy that the two males are working. I believe that this one has already matured. Uh, his claspers seem to be fully rolled. This one's claspers are still very small, so I'm not sure this one's mature. Now, when I first got those two, I quarantined them in this 180 behind me, 180 gallons, it's a six two by two. Right away, I noticed that they produce a lot of waste. So that's one of the biggest things you hear about when somebody wants to get their first ray. 
is, you know, how hard are they to keep? They're actually relatively hardy fish. I would say they are actually very hardy fish, but they did produce a lot of waste and I noticed that the nitrate would go up very quickly considering at the time there was only the two rays in this tank. Tank luckily has very good heavy filtration, especially for the volume of water. Eventually I ended up moving them and upgrading them to the 300 gallon behind me. It used to be in a different location. In fact, it used to be across the room where that 180 is now. That was sufficient for some time, but again, they were getting very aggressive with each other because it's two males. So now, as you guys know, I use that same 300 gallon to grow out these pups and my arowanas and iridescent sharks for the big tank eventually. These two pearls were the next two rays that I got, and uh, I got these from Josh Tanks, and man, they have been amazing to keep. So I will show some pictures of when I first got them, and maybe some videos. Now, they did come in with running spot, and you can probably see that in the videos, but after a few months, that did clear up and go away. I think it was just shipping stress but they are very tough rays. I did have this, uh, this is the male here, and you see that he is missing a chunk of his tail. He went through some kind of very bad, what I believe would be a bacterial infection when I first got him. I did think I was going to lose him, stopped eating for weeks. I'm not sure exactly what ended up working for treatment, but he one day decided to eat again, and then I started power feeding him. He completely healed up, and yeah, now he is right here keeping up with the female. So they were about a four inch disc when I got them and I would say they are around an eight inch disc now. I have had them for about 10 months, I think. So significant growth. I seem to, it seems to be that the pearls do not grow quite as fast as some of the other breeds. I don't know if that's definitely true all the time, but at least that's my experience and I have seen other people's pearls seem to stay smaller or take longer to grow also. But so yes, this was my first pair, male and female, and I would like to breed them someday. It might take another year or two for them to fully mature, but my plan is to try to breed these two. The next ray that I got, I got her from the Center from St for Stingray Biology. So this is a um, hybrid that was bred by Kevin at Stingray Biology, and she is pretty incredible. I got her, she was around five, five and a half inch disc, something like that, and she is pushing 12 inches now. I think uh, she is about 12 inches, but I know she's a solid 11, um, because when she lines up over the tiles, I can tell perfectly she's a solid 11 inch to 12 inch. Her growth has been crazy. So it kind of goes to show you that the genes and uh, the bloodline definitely seem to play some kind of role in their growth rate. She's got a lot of personality. You can see she hears me and she wants to eat. This is what she does when she wants to eat. But she's a beauty. She has black diamond in the bloodline. That's about all I know. I think these rays are so bred out at this point that they can't really pinpoint everything in their bloodline these days, but she's incredible, so uh, that's really all I can say about that. And she darkens up sometimes, depending on food or water quality maybe, but in general, she is just amazing. So uh, I do love to show her off. So the next two are another pair. This is the female and uh, they are hybrids. They are hybrid Motoro and Marble. So they look very different from each other. This is the male, but they are both the same type of hybrids. I'm not sure if they're from the same litter or not, but they have made some crazy growth in only about maybe four or, I wanna say four or five months. I got them at uh, about four and a half to five inch disc and now they are pushing eight, I wanna say eight to nine inch disc, especially this female. So what I know about Motoro is they do seem to grow the largest, especially the female Motoros seem to grow massive. 
So it is not surprising that they have caught up to the pearls and I think she has actually passed the pearls in size. They are characters and I do enjoy them. I'm not opposed. If they ever do breed, I would love that. That would be cool to see what comes of it. If it happens, it happens. That's pretty cool. But I do really enjoy these rays and watch their patterns change as they grow. It's really cool to see rays patterns really morph. All right guys, so the last ray that I've got right now is a new arrival. Only had them for a week and a half. So this is a Leo hybrid. He is, I wanna say, four and a half to five inch disc, something like that. And he is just adorable, he's doing very well. He just ate shrimp, so there's a lot of little pieces of shrimp all over the place. He's been doing great, he's very, very active. So the question that I get most often about rays is why don't you keep your stingrays with sand substrate. All the time, people will think it's cruel to not keep them with sand, or people think that stingrays need sand. My experience with rays and sand is they do not need it. Do they like it? Yes, I do think that, the, uh, that rays do like it. So I've kept pretty much all of my rays in sand before. I've kept the pups in sand, I've kept the big castexies in, in sand, and um, they do like to sift through it and they do bury themselves occasionally in it. But what I have noticed is they will move it to where they want it and they seem to like the bare spots of the tank just as much if not more. They will continue to swim in one place and they will move all of the sand. But this tank is more complicated than that. I do have the pumps People forget because you can't see them, but I have the one pump in this front corner and one pump uh, in that front corner, and they are on the floor of the tank. If I was to ever put a substrate in this tank, I would have to do something about that. But it would be inevitable two things. One, the fish and the rays are going to move the sand and it's going to get into the pumps anyway, no matter how hard I try to keep it out. And two, the rays and the fish are going to move the sand around no matter what. So there will be bare spots on the tank. It's not really gonna help much in the whole natural aspect and the rays do not need it. This keeps maintenance a lot easier. If you notice, the bottom does not develop a lot of debris. I don't do that. The fish do that. Mostly the stingrays actually. And that's another reason why I wanted the pumps on the floor because it keeps the debris off it. And it keeps me from needing to siphon up the bottom of the tank. Please let me know in the comments some of your experiences with rays or if you're interested in getting a stingray, let me know. Again, I always appreciate you guys watching. Please follow me on Instagram also if you're not already. And please comment, like, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Ring that bell.